My name is Bart Spiegel. I'm a deals partner based here in New York City. And I'm with Alex Burkett from Viacom. He's the global head of M&A for Viacom. Alex, why don't you give us a couple of minutes just about your, uh, your bios and roles and responsibilities and what you do on a daily basis. Sure, and, and thank you very much for, for having me. And, um, and, uh, and, and thanks for everyone for coming. We'll, we'll be efficient to make sure uh, we get you out of here. Uh, I know it's been a, a fun, uh, long morning. Um, I head up uh, corporate development um, across all of our geographies and all of our businesses, including our film studio and our media networks business. And that means uh, all M&A activity, um, all investments, all joint ventures. Also look after corporate strategies to so help Bob and the board and we think about where we're going in, 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 in an environment that's as um, complex as we've been talking about today. And I also look after a group called um, Emerging Opportunities to help think about how we uh, deal with changes in, in the business models, changes in technology and new, new, new business propositions and how we can think about those both commercially and what that means for how we're going to deploy our capital. And all that means I spend a lot of time on airplanes, so Alex, <laughs> I was sympathetic to your point. I spend enough time on airplanes that I can now reliably count on a bottle of water from America. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't we get started to, you know, I think the Viacom that I grew up with is, is very different than the Viacom that exists today. And so why don't we just talk about how a lot of us may have thought about Viacom in the past around linear, um, linear television consumption and the secular decline that we see uh, around that. Um, what are companies doing to retain that, those consumer connections out there? Yeah, I think that um, as we think about the world of um, distribution, we've traditionally had our MVPD partners. There's been a talk today about skinny bundles and the virtual MVPD providers. There's been talk, and we've heard from people that work at the big platforms, YouTube, uh, Google, Snapchat. Um, and, and we've also aware of a lot of the SVOD, OTT providers that, have, that are there, and increasingly mobile providers as they make huge investments in upgrading their networks. Um, and what that means is there's a lot more places for consumers to get content and to get it when they want it and how they want it. Um, and that obviously has some challenges for, for folks who rely on the traditional distribution channels um, and, and it's creating some dislocation. But if you step back from it uh, for a second, you think ultimately this is about connecting consumers with the content they want. And when you're a company that's um, in the business of making premium uh, episodic and film content, uh, under branded umbrellas that is uh, reliable and trustworthy to consumers uh, and have a long time um, and a long pedigree and heritage of making that content and reaching those consumers, um, you have to think that there, there's over time, that's a good position to be in. And I think we're excited about that proposition. Now there's going to be a dislocation as we find our way to those consumers and we find uh, successful and viable economic models to do so. Um, and, and as just to talk about a handful of ways that we're starting to think about that, um, on, on the one hand, we are in the two big virtual MVPD bundles, which are Sling and DirecTV Now, so we're pleased about that. Um, we're always talking to some of the other ones that are existing and growing, some of the ones that are, that are coming. For example, uh, we're a launch partner with Philo, which is the uh, first uh, entertainment-only OTT offering. Uh, we're also an investor in that business, so we're excited about the trajectory there. Um, we launched last year Viacom Digital Studios to uh, intentionally think about digital native, mobile native content and uh, design that for use across the big platforms and think about ways that we can both reach the consumers and use it as a vehicle to service our advertisers through branded content and otherwise. Um, and in the world of, of mobile where it's a competitive world and um, uh, people are focused on how they retain their subscribers in that competitive world. Uh, I think, you, and, and how they uh, make a use case for the enormous investment they've made in network. Uh, video is a strong part of both of those propositions. So, we've uh, we've signed five deals with mobile distributors around the world. We've done um, Telkom Cell in Indonesia. We've done um, Singtel in Singapore. We've done uh, UC in Denmark and uh, Benelux. We've done a big deal with Telefonica. Um, in uh, across Latin America, so we're making available our content both streaming-wise and on-demand-wise, um, and and showing some very interesting economic propositions there. We continue to explore similar opportunities in the United States. So uh, excited about the change and about what it means for us and how we can drive growth there. Right. right. Now I also understand all the airplanes then references <laughs> after after hearing that the. Um, 
You've also made a, an entrance into live events. And that's something that I think is relatively new when you think about you know, the, the old Viacom versus the, the new Viacom. Um, what are the challenge and, challenges and benefits with ramping up a live events business? Yeah, so uh, it's, it's a good point. Your point is well taken that uh, it's, it's been one of our new initiatives. Um, and it's sort of one of the three core pillars of our strategy. We talk about uh, strengthening our core. We talk about thinking about new and interesting ways to go direct to the consumer and, and service our consumers in that way. And we think about diversifying our revenue, which is a theme we've heard a little bit about from various participants today. Um, in that third bucket, uh, we certainly spend a lot of time focusing on our consumer products business. We're a very large participant in that market. We do four billion at retail. It, it's you know, fundamentally rests in the building blocks of having great IP, whether that's SpongeBob or Paw Patrol at Nickelodeon, whether that's South Park at Comedy Central, whether that's our film properties at Paramount, and finding ways to work with um, licensed partners to monetize that in a way that's outside of the traditional television ecosystem. That's a large and a strong growing part of our business. So that's one of our diversification strategies. The second is recreation where we think about how we can license that same type of IP, not always the same exact IP, mm -hmm. as well as our umbrella brands like Nickelodeon or MTV to partners who might be hotel chains, who might be resort destinations, who might be theme parks. And we have uh, a very active business working with our partners there, on a, again, on a global basis. Uh, we broke ground last year with a partner in, in China for a large uh, Nickelodeon uh, theme park. So excited about that. We also have uh, Nickelodeon uh, hotel resorts in the Dominican Republic and one coming online in Mexico shortly. Oh. That's a second uh, bucket there. And the third that you, you referenced is, uh, is live events. And that's a business I'm particularly excited about, I think, in a world of uh, uh, rapid evolution where disintermediation is happening uh, in many corners. Live events and the in real life yeah. experience and the communal excitement of sharing something with, with people is is a very interesting place and it's very difficult for the internet or some of the big platforms to disintermediate that. So I think that's an exciting thing and I think also the platforms actually and the value of having a picture or a selfie at an event that's important that gives it a social currency that actually is a, another tailwind for the sector. So um, we're, we're expanding what we're doing in, in live events. We were, you know, with our tentpole um, award show programs, whether that be the VMAs or whether that be the Kids' Choice Awards, we've been in the business of making live events for a long time, right. generally as a television event and an advertising vehicle. And over time, we're now developing that and adding to that uh, many events that uh, target the consumers on a ticketed basis. So um, we, we'll do about 400 events this year, uh, have over 2 million, um, 2 million attendees, around the globe and that, that's you know, rapidly growing. Each of our flagship properties now has an event. We've got Slime Fest happening this coming weekend in Chicago for, uh, for Nickelodeon. If anyone's interested in getting slimed with your children, um, <laughs> see me after. Um, we're bringing back uh, MTV's uh, Spring Break weekend this year. Uh, I just came back from San Francisco where we hosted the second annual Cluster Fest Comedy Festival for Comedy Central uh, featured um, Trevor Noah on Friday night, Tiffany Haddish and Amy Schumer Saturday night, and closed with John Stewart on Sunday night. Great event, 40,000 people right in the heart of, uh, of San Francisco. Um, and, uh, and we this year purchased VidCon, which is sort of a, a flagship event for our, um, for our uh, Viacom Digital Studios. It's the leading digital content creation uh, of, uh, event. Um, in the country and really in the world. In, in Anaheim, I'll be heading out there in two weeks for that. Oh, that's great. And what a good way to keep your IP and your properties front and center in the mind of the consumer. Yeah, I think, you know, from our perspective, it's that, right? right? It's an opportunity to give our consumers another touch point with our brands. When we have a live event, uh, it, it, it serves a marketing function in that right. respect. It's a revenue diversification uh, uh, opportunity. It's not only a ticket opportunity, it's a it's a merch or consumer property opportunity, and it's a food and beverage opportunity. So there's lots of levers right. to drive that. Um, and then finally, it can be another interesting um, vehicle for us to provide to our advertising partners. So a lot of interesting activations happening. Uh, for example, this weekend at Clusterfest, there are a lot of fun for both the consumers and our advertisers. Sure, sure. So let's pivot to technology and how you sell and deploy advertising in the market. Um, how has the improvement in technology allowed you guys to better monetize that? 
Yeah, I think, so Viacom, I think, is proud of its heritage as one of the uh, early adopters to advance marketing solutions. And uh, it, frankly, is going to be the, the driver of uh, our, our advertising business going forward and how we uh, get growth out of that business as we think about increasing pools of um, targetable uh, advanced ar advertising that are coming online all the time, whether that's through our TV Everywhere applications, whether that's through um, various partnerships we might have with, say, Roku or people like that, or whether it's with our MVPD or virtual MVPD distribution partners. Uh, and when we have that capability to use addressable advertising, uh, as is mentioned by Chris earlier, that's going to be an opportunity to sell that advertising at, at a more um, effective cost price point and be, frankly provide a better experience for the consumers who are going to see ads that are more relevant to them on the one hand and our advertisers who can over time shift from buying uh, men 18 to 34 because some subset of them will be pickup truck right. intenders right. to buying pickup truck intenders. Um, and to that end, we are proud to be a founding partner of OpenAP. Uh, consortium that uh, we've, we started with, with Fox and Turner okay. to um, standardize and, um, and enrich how people measure uh, and deliver um, enhanced advertising. So um, what we found in the marketplace was a pickup of truck and tender was sold and defined differently and delivered uh, differently by uh, Viacom than it might have been by Fox and Turner. So by getting together a consortium and standardizing that and creating uh, uh, um, those types of um, uh, guidelines, yep. uh, we're, better, we're all better able to monetize it in the marketplace. And we're happy to have NBC join that venture now, um, Univision, so more than 50% of the content providers oh. uh, in the universe are part of it. And I think that really is going to help to turbocharge our advanced marketing solutions efforts. Interesting. So virtual MVPDs are continuing, continuing to grow. Um, and they're broad use across demographics. What, in your mind, is the next step in the evolution of tel television consumption? You know, it, it's probably, I don't want to overlap too much with what I said earlier, but um, I, I think that, in general, um, there's going to be rapid evolution in the way people yeah. are getting their content. I think, in addition to uh, virtual offerings or skinny bundle offerings, I think what the telecom providers are going to be doing is going to be interesting. Um, and frankly, if we're sitting here next year, the year after, or if we're in Asia, we'll, we can, um, I think we'll be thinking about, um, you know, new things that we don't know of today, new right. technologies, new distribution methods. And I think from our perspective, um, you know, having the dexterity to make sure that we can continue to uh, make top flight uh, content, create top flight IP, we'll then have to find our way through the various distribution channels to get that. But I think, frankly, a lot of them represent interesting growth opportunities for us. Yeah. Yeah. So part of your strategy has also been making these acquisitions and investments to um, imp improve and expand the, 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 the current portfolio. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think are some of the best strategic investments you've made recently? Yeah, I guess I'll flag three, um, sort of talk a little bit about different things that we've already touched upon. Um, the first is VidCon, which is the largest um, uh, digital content producer, YouTube, historically YouTubers, now diversifying um, conference in the world. So that's not just, it, it, it's sort of one part consumer show, think um, Comic-Con for the people um, that want to see the, the, the YouTube stars and the other online social media stars that, that exist. It's also one part trade conference for those people to come and um, so there's different tracks to it. It's in Anaheim uh, every year, uh, coming up in two weeks, and it'll have 30 to 40,000 people oh, attend wow. over the course of three days. We were able to acquire that business from, from the founder, and we're showing great, great momentum this year when we can fold in our ability to sell to our advertisers uh, in addition to the consumer um, ticketed experience. It's really, really a good thing for us. And we, as a pretty global company, um, are able to overlay that as well. So we'll strengthen the offering that exists already in Australia for VidCon. And we launched recently that next year we're going to start in London. So that was a good one that we did in January of this year. Uh, also in January, we bought a business called Huse, which is a branded entertainment um, marketing company. So helping to f have advertisers reach um, their target audience generally on social platforms by creating interesting branded campaigns, creative campaigns in partnership 
with social media stars. A great business, we had okay. invested in it over a couple of rounds because we were a user of the product. Our ad sales organization was a user of the product and now we've been able to bring that in-house and really turbocharge that effort with our uh, very impressive ad sales organization, our reach into clients. So oh, great. that was a good one. And then more recently in, in March, we announced that we partnered with uh, Trevor Noah and, and invested in his production vehicle, which is called uh, Zero Day Productions. Uh, and I think this is an opportunity and, and speaks to another uh, strategic priority for us, which is strengthening our relationship with content creators and making sure that as we um, partner with these creators to make them global phenomenons, we're there also to participate going forward. Um, historically, under prior management, that wasn't something that um, Viacom was always perfect at. So it's exciting to have that type of a partnership and to be able to um, know that we have a first look exclusive opportunity for Trevor across a whole range of things that he's doing. For example, we're going to be doing his movie, um, which is based on his autobiography, Born a Crime, uh, through our Paramount Players uh, uh, film uh, operation. And we have a first look on all the various things he may do, and we're excited to have him at Clusterfest this weekend. So it's, uh, it, I think it's a good, a, good, a good example of us being supportive of our, of our talent, putting our money where our mouth is in terms of the partnership, and also uh, being there to help uh, grow Trevor and our brands together. And not just Trevor, but any other talent that you're able to help curate and develop and looking to kind for of replicate that For success. sure. And, you know, there used to be a term in the music business 15 years ago doing 360 deals to mm -hmm. help think about um, ways that, you know, you can grow the entertainer, grow the portfolio and, and participate in those things. And we've done that across a number of different places with Jojo Siwa. We've done that with uh, Tyler Perry, who last year we announced we signed to a, a long-term content deal wherein He's going to be producing 90 uh, drama and comedy episodes a year for us, for BT and other of our networks, as well as uh, we'll have a first look deal on his going forward film projects. Very excited with right. that. Uh, I think it's critical to us to be in business with the best and the brightest, and I think those names are a, a good representative of a, a host of other deals we've done. Absolutely. Uh, but yeah, excited about that. So why don't we just briefly chat about mobile and what, how do you think uh, mobile uh, what the impact of mobile has as the TV ecosystem evolves. Yeah, I, I, as, we, as I mentioned a little bit ago, the, the, more, um, the more that business becomes competitive and yep. the more that business invests uh, enormous amounts of money in their infrastructure and making, um, and making that um, uh, 5G investment, uh, I think that to a certain extent they need to um, uh, underpin that by making sure that the content is there to support their... Uh, consumer, and I think that increasingly will want to be uh, able to show their customers that they have some unique content offering that differentiates them from somebody else. And I think for us that represents a great opportunity to not only um, to license content that we have, whether that be streams, whether that be on-demand content from our catalog, but also to capitalize on the momentum we have from Viacom Digital Studios as well as um, as well as Paramount Television, which is now a three-year-old television studio that, um, that we, we've, we've restarted under the Paramount Film Studio. But also what we've done internationally in terms of Telefe, which is an acquisition we made uh, two, uh, two, two and a, almost two years ago now in Argentina, which has an enormous uh, Spanish language, uh, both library and production capability. So as we think about those assets um, and our experience and our heritage in making premium uh, IP and content, I think there are opportunities for us to do um, bespoke content specifically designed to service the needs of these mobile operators and beyond that, whether that become SVOD operators, whether that's some of the, uh, some of the big social platforms or otherwise, I mean, we're excited about that capability. Interesting. So just being sensitive to the time here, I'll give you one more, uh, one more question, which is, you know, you've traveled the world going to see all these great things, um, innovations in all different countries. What are you most excited about, about bringing here to the U.S., or what have you seen that you think will play well here in the U.S. market? Yeah, it's, it's interesting, and, and, and Bob, our, our CEO, used to run the international part of our business, so he's particularly dialed into this, and um, we've, we've had, there, there are a host of, of things that we've been able to do where we've had success internationally and been able to import that to, to the U.S., I think. Uh, for example, Slimefest, the festival that we're doing in Chicago uh, for the first time in the United States next weekend is something that's existed for many, many years internationally. Um, so that's one of many examples of us um, 
capitalizing on what we've done internationally and, and bringing it home. We introduced a product, uh, a streaming product internationally called Playplex, something that we had, we've had really good success with, and that's helping us inform how we think about what we're going to do on a direct-to-consumer basis in the United States and otherwise. Great. All right, well, thank you. I appreciate you taking the time, and uh, thank you again, everybody, for, uh, for coming. I think we're going to hand it off to Mark now. Thank you.